name is Elom Amezube and I had a set of twin girls. Actually, it was through a friend. I mean, I complained to her, I wasn't feeling too good. I felt lazy and all that. And then she just said I was pregnant. But then I didn't actually believe it until I went to the hospital to get tested. I was a bit surprised because it wasn't part of my plans. I was a bit surprised. But then after some time, I was excited. Okay, so I was home one day and I started seeing blood clot. So I called my midwife and she asked me to go for a scan. I'd done a scan the first time already. So I went back to do the scan and the doctor was like, uh, you came the first time, didn't I tell you there were twins? I said, no, it's okay, then you have twins. And that is the reason for the blood clot, they were separating. So that's how, you, that's how come you see the blood clots. At that moment, I was excited because being pregnant for the first time and I'm carrying twins. I was excited. The part I enjoyed most was when the babies were kicking. Kicking, feeling them move and out and about. I enjoyed that part a lot. There were days that they were just quiet. And I'm like, girls, you people need to let me know you are there. And then it, it's not just the movement, you know, like children playing vigorously. Yeah, and then I'll just keep on telling me, don't, telling them, don't mind, don't worry about what your dad is doing now, you know. And there were days when, when the guy was settled, he came to the house and he wanted to feel the move. They wouldn't move. But immediately they step out of the house. I'm like, you girls, what is wrong with you? And then everywhere is just boom, boom. They're just moving around and playing around. They could sense it, they did. I'm sure they did. I had a lot of complications. So I was almost always in and out of the hospital on admission. My blood pressure was always up. And I was losing Lyco as well. So then it was really tough. Being a first timer, it was really tough for me. seven and a half months. I had gone to the hospital for a checkup. That was in the evening because my doctor told me to come in the evening. And then when I got there, I was checked and he was like, I had dilate, dilated 7 cm. So they wouldn't allow me to go back home. So my sister had to go home to bring my stuff. And that was it. They prepared me for delivery. It was painful, really painful. Um, I remember being, when I got to the hospital, there was this woman there who was also in labor. And the way she was shouting was funny, so I was laughing. And then my sister said, you wait, yours is coming. So then my water didn't break at home. They had to break it manually. They had to use something to bring the water. So then after the water came out was when the pain started. And then I also started shouting like who I was laughing at. It was painful. I was excited. I didn't remember the pain anymore. I was really excited. And because they were preterm, I didn't get to hold them. They were quickly taken into the incubator. I didn't get to hold them then. At the time, I didn't know, I had no idea about the complications I had, what to do after birth and all that. So um, I gave birth on a Friday and then on a Saturday morning, I was just chat, on a Saturday morning, I went back to the hospital to check on the girls. And then one wasn't breathing too well. But they assured me everything was going to be okay. So they told me to go home and come back in the evening. I went back in the evening with my sister 
and my uncle. On getting to the hospital, they told me the one who wasn't breathing well had died. It was a bit shock to me. I mean, considering all the pain I had been through, the complications and all that, I wasn't expecting to lose um, my children. And then it was, I cried a lot. They made us go back home, but I couldn't sleep through the night. So as early as 5 a.m., I woke up and then told them to take me to the hospital. And then upon getting there, which was a Sunday morning, upon getting there, my sister was talking to the nurse. So I saw the baby lying down. So I was a bit calm because at least I have one left. And then I asked my sister, like, can I go and see the baby now? And then she ran out of the room crying, crying. And then I realized that the second one had also died. So they made me go, my uncle made me go and look at them if they were really mine my babies and then yeah they were it was a big blow on me it took me like over a year to get over it over a year to get over it yeah they didn't give actually the only thing i knew was the first one wasn't breathing well and then when she passed away the second one also started breathing the same way the first was breathing and then so nobody actually sat me down to say this is what happened to the children this was what you were going through you are supposed to do this after birth nothing i didn't know anything about it not the health workers not my family not anybody so i had to go through all that alone or on my own i had to figure out i didn't even know i was supposed to go back to the hospital for checkups after birth nobody told me either so I had to manage a lot of things on my own. I didn't go back there, so I didn't know what my family dealt with the burial and everything. I didn't go back to the hospital. And actually, I didn't want to know, and nobody even cared to tell. So I just held on to what I knew like that. Yeah, I do. In the beginning, I did. I wish they were still there. I was like, um, after all the pain I've been through, at least I could get consolation from even one of them. It was painful. I was crying every now and then. And I think my family didn't understand me. They thought I was react overreacting. But my sister was a psychiatric nurse, so she understood. So she would talk to me. She would make me see one of her doctors. And it helped. Otherwise, I was alone most of the time when everybody was awake, I was at home because I wasn't going to work myself. I'd cry myself to sleep, suicide, there were lots, there was a lot going on in my head. I would say a year and a half because I stopped working. I couldn't concentrate to work, so I stopped working. So after a little over a year, after I was settled, I went back to work. It was my cousin, when it happened, I stopped going to church. So my cousin, one of my cousins started talking about going back to church prayer. I'm like, there's no point in praying. If God didn't hear my prayer the first time, then there's no point in going back to church. But then it was persistent till one day I decided to follow them to church. And then there was a prayer session and I, what everything the pastor talked about then was like talking to me directly. And then for some reason I just felt some peace in my heart and I decided to let go. And then the following day I went back to work. I was okay, I was normal, my face lit up again. I started dressing up well, I had said keeping myself well, and then I moved on from there. Yes. Yes. Con con concerning the pregnancy, I would have asked a lot more questions about what I was going through, what were the chances I would have asked a lot of questions. I was young and I was naive, so 
I was just going with the flow. I didn't ask questions. I didn't know actually what was wrong with me until now. I had to read a lot of things to get to know what was going on with me then. And a lot of people had died through what I went through. Emotionally, medically, uh, psychologically. Medically, I've told you about the hospital losing Lycor and the blood pressure thing. And then emotionally, my family members and the guy I was pregnant with for weren't helping. They weren't happy because initially they weren't happy. He wasn't happy about it. I wasn't happy about it either, but I wasn't ready to abort either. So I was ready for whatever was going to come, but I didn't know it was going to turn out that way. There was a lot of pressure on me from both sides of the family. So, um, let's see. I, first of all, I was happy I didn't abort the pregnancy. I was happy I experienced being pregnant. I was happy I experienced carrying twins. And then the movement. You know, sometimes you talk to them. I mean, like, when they want to answer to me, when they want to answer, they move. You say something, they move. That means they heard you. It was exciting. I enjoyed every part of that. I would say that when women, when we get pregnant, Aside what the doctor tells us, or midwives tells us, we should be able to ask a lot of questions. Because as young as I was, it was my first time being pregnant. All they did was, you are not well enough to go home. You stay in the hospital with a lot of drips. You can stay in the hospital for like two weeks, three weeks. They give you um, high blood pressure medication, drips and all that. And I didn't bother, I wouldn't say I wouldn't bother, but for the fact that I was in the hospital, I got tired. I got tired at some point and I was like, they should just take the babies out so they'll be fine. But the doctor said he wanted, he wanted the babies to get to the nine months. So I kept holding on. I was still, people would come and meet me in the hospital, they'll go and I'll still be there. I'm always sweating. I can't sleep at night. And sleep at night and then most most of the time yeah so basically i tell women to ask questions about what is going on with them and then after birth what they are supposed to do i don't know if a lot of people know that but a lot of young people don't know that they're supposed to ask questions and then know what to do after birth how to take care of yourself whether you had the baby or not how to take care of yourself yeah